Hello people, welcome back to the channel, this is Sorin and today's video we are going to talk about the Art of Strategy game mode. Uh, this game mode was played on uh, the test server back in 2021, I don't really remember how but I remember we used to play it and therefore it made it into the game. Is it fun? Is it enjoyable? I'm going to give you my full review about what I think about this game mode, whether I enjoyed it and I really want this game to be added to the implemented um, furthermore into the game, just like Frontline maybe, or either it was just a pile of trash. Stick to the video and I'm going to explain you why and what I think about everything. And now that I am uh, using my face cam, I realize something. Let's Oh yeah, looks much, much better. Okay, out with the jokes and let's jump into the PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm doing the PowerPoint. I'm really sorry that I'm stealing the idea from Raging Raptor, but I believe this is the best idea where I can explain and uh, have my uh, my words that and I, the idea that I uh, was thinking, they were going through my mind when I uh, made this PowerPoint. So we're going to stick to this idea. So, our key features of this game, it was um, the first encounter with AI vehicles where we were able to drive them pretty much or to control them, to give them orders because we stick with AI as an enemies for some while ago. Remember there was the, low, the Road to Berlin event back in uh, 2019 or 20, somewhere up, sometime ago and furthermore events such as this one. So it was quite a nice first encounter with the artificial intelligence. Uh, there were a new mechani mechanics added to the game, uh, the new diversity of modes we could play, as a 1v1 as I uh, mentioned, as a 1v7 or a 7v1 if I can say so. Um, you can control 7 vehicles and develop strategies to win, for example, our field commanders when they are fighting into the clan wars, they pretty much control 15 vehicles, but um, they pretty much control um, each clan member has to listen to them and therefore use human strategies to, to develop the strategy to win the battle. Over here it's a bit different, you can give the vehicle commands and the AI is gonna follow the command and do some um, some uh, what is supposed to do. Um, there were implemented new objects to simulate a real fight, which it is a really nice opinion in my in my humble opinion. Such as the AMR and the AT gun, the um, MG turret, the flamethrower. There are pretty much ne nice things to have on the battlefield that could um, influence the battlefield somehow. Pretty much they can stop lightning from pushing into a flank. They can uh, block some some tanks for like 40 seconds, 50 seconds, how much it takes to take them down. The um, MRL were really helpful when um, the enemy pushed through, for example, a flank and there, had, there, there were like five vehicles next to um, one of them. There are pretty decent things to have. Uh, as I mentioned, the three ways to play the game mode. It is a limited time edition. We have, I believe, 10 days or sometime like that to test it out and to play it. You get rewards for that, um, which in my humble opinion are okay-ish. I mean, uh, 20 hours of um, credit booster, the 2500 gold and the crew book. It is really, really good in my opinion. And um, yeah, one of the most important things, it doesn't require anything to play, just your time. Um, all of the um, repairs, all of the maintenance, all of the ammo, it is uh, paid by Wargame, it is free pretty much and uh, you just have to maybe test the game mode and maybe Wargame is gonna do a survey, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do a survey on how this performed but overall it was really really good that you don't require a premium tank, a premium time to actually run this game mode. Uh, I never play tier 9 or tier 10s when I don't have premium time because obviously I'm getting like minus 40k, minus 50k on credits and yeah, it's not really good for my um, wallet. Therefore, playing this game mode, making 80, 90,000 a game, it was really, really enjoyable. So, is this, is this game really enjoyable? Um, well, 95% of my games were all about camping. If I didn't do any move, um, 
pretty much I will stay there for, for 10 minutes or how long are they? I don't really want to spend my uh, time looking at the timer over there uh, to see how long those vac those battles take. Pretty much 15 minutes. I'm not sure how much they actually there is actually, but um, yeah, there were like moments where I had to stay for five minutes doing nothing, waiting for the enemy to maybe throw a tank onto onto the city or something like that. It was just pure camping um, and uh, obviously the meta into 2022 all tanks are cooled down um, all maps are made for they are having the gradient they're having the hills they're having all kind of position where you can um, obviously use your turret armor just camp into position it is really really annoying honestly uh, yes but um, Another thing which I didn't really enjoy it was the you get rewarded for that. Obviously, um, if you if the enemy is um, camping and you have to push into them, you are gonna push into like an open field um, where it's easily for them to shoot at you. They don't have to move; they just have to sit and aim, which um, therefore increases their uh, chances to hit and penetrate. And um, yeah, over, over, obviously, if you do a move you're gonna lose all of your hit points and therefore the enemy is gonna have an advantage because he is camping into a position and uh, obviously he's gonna win the battle because of that i'm gonna make uh, i'm gonna upload the video of this where i try to push um, what map was that it was something like the i don't remember what map was it it was pretty much as i don't even remember the name i don't look at the names of the mini pub sorry for that but you're gonna have the video uploaded onto YouTube um, where I try to push with seven tanks into six and therefore I lost the game because of that well pretty much time runs out and I was like a second uh, away from them but there was a really really bad push and yeah obviously both uh, teams ended to a draw and therefore if you are not skilled enough into pushing, you are gonna lose, and therefore the enemy is gonna get a points. Now I saw that there is actually a leather bo leaderboard, and um, you get points and you get rewards for um, winning. So yeah, hardcore defending means higher chance to win, which in my opinion it is not not great. Next to that, um, the I felt a bit buggy. Um, into the gla not glacier map into the Mannerheim lane and I sent my Manticore to the typical bush when it spawned to the um, eastern flank and uh, what happened with that Manticore is that I sent him to recon I then sent him to adapt to the position and he went to the bush he went out of the bush he got spotted and then he jumped into the water it was just um, annoying next to that I sent to an E100 to um, obviously, I pushed into a balcony with another tanks to spot. I um, took control of my 100 just to snipe and make the accurate shot work. Next to that, I pulled him back around the corner and jumped out of the vehicle because the other spotters were needing help because they once again move out of the position. And the 100, I don't know what he was doing, he was reversing the enemy fire, and therefore I lost um, the E100 for free. And it was a bit annoying from my uh, opinion so yeah the um artificial intelligence it's somewhere tricky with the moves they do but uh, overall the um the firepower um i gotta say it was aiming decent enough um obviously another thing which i did not enjoy there was no progression towards the battle season and personally i am gonna judge that because I'm running out of time to complete the battle season. Um, like to complete 150 stages now, I'm about 75 or 76, so I'm like halfway in. And spending so much time to get this game mode, it was um, not good for my time uh, playing the game. Obviously, now I have limited amount of time to play the game, and not having a reward towards the battle season, like you do in front line, in front line, you get. Uh, like 25 for winning, being top 3, being even for losing you get like 5 five to 10 points and therefore it's still something. Uh, if I did my 9 battles, 7 battles, how much I did into this, um, it would be really really nice to get at least 50 or maybe like another 
um, stage to progress to um, the battle season and yeah um, it will be really nice to have the progression toward the battle season personally i will enjoy this more to play this game out um over overall if you play this game out for a long time you can um, uh, adapt to the situation and you obviously you see that in the first game you played your tanks that were slow didn't work out you played some uh, paper armor paper tank didn't work out uh, you move to auto loaders you so that can burst enemy good strategy you try to adapt to make it better to um, make it work you can abuse the system by a uh, meaning by that uh, you can um, pretty much like take a picture of where you can position the enemy mlg the enemy um, not mlg mrl the watchtower the flamethrower you can just blind fire them and yeah it's not gonna be it's gonna be the point of uh, actually having those things in you can play the artillery and just um, take them out the 80 guns as well so yeah it, over the time it's not gonna be as fun and overall i believe it's gonna destroy the system it's, it's gonna be long term and um yeah it's, it's overall about this point and then an annoying thing it was average waiting time it took me three to four minutes to play a tank destroyer and um, I don't wanted to try meeting because I'm, re I'm pretty sure they show like the, the waiting screen they show like uh, 160 heavy tanks or 160 mediums and like 50 tank destroyers and I'm like yeah I'm gonna play the tank destroyers because it's gonna take less time and I, it took me three to four minutes to actually get into a game and that is pure pure pain trust me it was a lot of time to wait to play as a tanker versus a strategist and obviously um playing as a strategist is require you to get 100 envelopes or 100 orders i'm not sure which one is which and uh, pretty much like another four five battles to play as a tanker to play a game of a strategist which is mm, discutable but i'm not gonna discuss about this um, I'm really impressed about Wargaming that they didn't introduce any kind of monitorization to this game, which is a bit weird, but um, actually it's a thumbs up and I enjoy that, but um, the waiting time it was a bit off and um, personally if there is going to be anything to fix this, it's going to be a big thumbs up for me. Um, an, ad an advantage, you can get a lot of credits, as I mentioned I have made 80-90,000 credits per uh, game which is just really good because obviously um, if you don't have a free uh, if you don't have a premium time uh, playing tier 10 is a bit expensive and now you don't have to pay any for anything you just get the rewards you get for uh, missions therefore you get good um, amount of credits even if you're free to play even if you're pay to win if you have a, a premium account, if you don't have, it's still really, really good to play. So, what I will do to actually fix the game. Um, there was this thing which um, Wargaming showed into the leatherboard. There was actions per minute. Now, and I was like, hmm, this can actually, um, like the game can monitor how many actions per minute to do. Uh, and I believe that is mentioning how many times you make a tank do something uh, like you give him an order and um, I'm pretty sure if they are gonna add something like a fourth um, barrier or something like that if it's gonna drop under 20 actions per minute like you pretty much don't do anything you don't use your mouse it is uh, gonna get you a warning like in two, five minutes it's gonna be either um, like we had in the front line where you pushed into a flank that is not open you're gonna get fired by the gun turret or maybe like you get out of the game you get a sanction for that um, a sanction that can fix uh, the camping the hardcore camping and as i mentioned into the video that i'm gonna upload you're gonna see why it actually is pissing me off this much um, I would really love to actually use some frontline features because they were pretty much in the game for this much amount of time and they can make the game much realistic and what do I mean by that? Obviously the air artillery strike like you have uh, 100, 
every 170 seconds you can use the artillery strength maybe to blind fire the position where you think the enemies are still camping if they have the um, for example how can i give you a certain uh, a certain example well um, if you have the balcony on mines like uh, on the northern spawn you do have that balcony over there and if you feel like they have 50 tank destroyers over there you can just artillery strike that or um, if you're playing like if you want to contest the hill on a map or if you want to push into a position you can just artillery strike that position and send your um, forces right away to fight so yeah, you can pretty much um, break to a camping position uh, both having the minefield as a defense uh, placing them near maybe your base and so on it is more diver more of diversity so yeah you can have the recon thing you have the um, the smoke cloud yeah you can have, you can have any, um, anything from it because i feel like um yeah they're pretty useful it felt like from front line and um, overall i cannot really give you an improvement over, over this game mode because it is um, still i believe in early development as i mentioned the ai needs needs the um, a bit of tweaks and perks over there and uh, yeah i don't really have all kind of the um, the survey and the database to see what is overall what the opinion thing this is overall my my opinion and um, let me know what do you think about this game or did you enjoy did you enjoy it did you like it what do you think about it and um, another thing which i'm kind of concerned if um, this gonna this game mode is gonna be like pretty popular it is gonna be reaching a peak in interest uh, until everyone is the position and all of that till it's gonna get boring like i'm gonna put you over here a graph and uh, obviously if you look at it everyone's gonna be like oh my god it's so funny they're gonna play everyone till it reaches the point where everyone learns the strategies and the position and what tanks are good for what um strategy and they feel like mm, we reach to i mean uh, like we reach <laughs> a limit where we don't uh, learn nothing and everything becomes boring and they're gonna pretty much quit and leave so um so yeah that's that's about the game mode itself um next to that i want to talk about the rewards um as I mentioned, there was these things like the credit boosters, the reserve, the manual and the bonds. And what I forget actually to mention, there were five of the crew members. Really good in my opinion. And um, the missions, you need to spend a lot of time. The leatherboard, which in uh, my opinion, <laughs> it's really nice. You can see what enemies what um, what the, the community is doing you get like this uh, beautiful um, badge or whatever it's called um, yeah another thing which I really want to mention it's I don't understand why they um, they are playing only with I don't know like 10 maps or something like that why they are not um, adding like things like berlin why they have to play airfield ab tanks are that really hard to push into um whether it's not like berlin el haluf maybe fjords maybe himals or highway why there are tanks where there are um, obviously the maps that are more inclined to tanks that don't have the um, the gun depression why all of them have to be for um Cool down monster like a crown wagon like all of this it doesn't make sense to me and um, i forgot to mention overall for the strategist um it is really really good to have those things and i really enjoy that wargaming gave it like two of each or something like that you get more for playing a one with seven as a strategist versus seven tankers because um like the watchtower can um, make you um, how can I say, how can I say it 
you pretty much don't need a light. You can have all of your uh, setup, sniping setup to um, to sit at the back and have those things spot for you. But at the same time, uh, they are not. I mean, I don't really know how it works. Like they have 100 meters view range, and you can only spot them when you're like 50 meters or something like that. I don't know. There, there is not a lot of explanation over them, and therefore I cannot give you a full opinion about the watchtowers. The MRL were are really nice to have. I really enjoy having those. The gun turret, um, lovely, it has 2,600 2, hit points, um, making the enemy be slowed down a bit, like uh, you can have all the time to think about what you can do with the 7 tanks, you cannot control all 7 at a time. Um, the MG turrets are uh, pretty decent, talking about mediums and lightly armored tanks. Uh, 1800 hit points are decent enough. You can put them to slow enemies down, like the same as the flamethrower. And the hit gun are pretty much some kind of a sniping uh, defensive, if you can say so. But overall, I feel like um, the game mode. It's gonna be a 7.5 out of 10. As I mentioned, I enjoyed it, but it felt like um, I spent too much time into it just to complete the missions and even I got like a third of it done. But um, yeah, I really need to be focused more on the battlefield and playing the game mode without any progress to the battlefield. It was a big, big pain for me. And therefore, I'm gonna end the video here. Tell me, guys, what do you think about this game mode? Have you enjoyed it? Let me down. Uh, let me know what do you think is gonna be a big, a, a big fix for this. So my name is Sorry. Was Sorry. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I'm gonna see you, legends, in the next one. Bye bye.